and we're recording. Awesome. All right, so here's our second video. We're going to play some blue-white control splashing green for Uro. It was a suggestion in our previous video in the comments. And then Dalton is playing red-green mid-range. I am a very big advocate for uh, red-green. I've been playing red-green probably for about two years now. I've top 16 a lot of regionals with this deck. It's kind of my baby. It's kind of what I'm, you know, good at. So post astrally world, just trying to see uh, where the deck stands. You know, Blood Moon becoming a little bit more relevant now. So for sure. So we're gonna All right. do what we did last time. We're gonna run it through some uh, modern tournament practice, and then mm -hmm. see how they fight. Let's see how the decks hold up right now. Then post Astrolabe. All right. It's Which I'm still not 100 percent sure. All right, I made it. It says waiting for retro. Sure. With with goblins on the rise right now. Uh, in terms of playability and how good and consistent that deck is. Uh, we still don't know for sure like where the pieces fall for Modern. Uh, I still think a blue-white X deck is still going to be really good. I just don't know what shell. Hmm. I'm going to keep... Sand is pretty good. Um, uh, let's see. What's going on here? Got some lag. Oh, sorry. Not sure what happened. The best start. about the blood moon i've got my lands but i was i was pretty worried you were just gonna have it right there it's possible i should have um, just played uh, my fetch. fetch yeah it's definitely a consideration yeah that might have been a little reckless but i didn't get punished so cool <laughs> what this Pillage. Rude. Probably it's not even going to fetch. Like, I can play around Blood Moon pretty adequately. Like, start it starting now. I don't really have a, uh, a good 2-mana play that would require me to For fetch sure. now anyway. Let's try this again. Oh. I'm under the that uh always talk about like mags to the moon versus blood moon right now um i think right now you don't really want magus everything it dies to basically everything in the format and um that force negation is not that big of a worry nowadays so let's see what we get interesting so i like this play. Ooh, that's a good one. Is that like a one over or something? See, this deck is real awkward because, like, if I want to play around Blood Moon, I kind of like have to, but now that I'm playing green for O, it makes it much harder to play around it. Sure. You can only have, you know, one out of four Blood Moons, right? Yeah. If I had it, I would have played it. So, I mean, I'm, I am I would be under the assumption. I mean, I've it. got a couple basics. 
So I'm not like ridiculously worried, but I am at least a little worried. Sure. I kind of have to path this thing now, which is awkward. I guess I can upkeep it. Like in response to your trigger. Like I can Teferi and like bounce the thing, but then it just dies. The Teferi just dies to an attack, which seems bad. Maybe that's okay, given what else I have in my hand. Yeah. Your, your deck just does a really good job at pressuring the walkers, which like generally are the ways that blue-white gets ahead. So having adequate pressure, I think, is kind of unfortunate. a good one a lot of my cards just seem to line up well sometimes yeah. like well that, that there are just some some i'm kind of inclined to do these two things just so i can get this down this is a cleaner a cleaner play though and also doesn't give you another resource. It's pretty close. I think I'm meant to just play this. Play this now. I mean, this is nice because it gets rid of uh, it gets rid of um, Clothis, but that that doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue anytime soon. All right, so let's do this first. This can permanently get rid of the wall. Not the worst. Alright, and then I guess I should be upkeeping this. I mean, there's a consideration in doing it now. I mean, actually, it doesn't matter. I, I could do it now, because then you eat fewer things. But you've got three mana anyway, so... Like, you just eat, you just eat everything regardless. I guess I should even more technically do this draw step. It's very hard for you to beat. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> it's plus is a plus two. Yikes, man. You sure you didn't build this deck to beat mine? <laughs> uh, I, I've always played one Wake in the Inferno since she's come out. She's good here, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm gonna need some help. It's pretty standard here. Uh, this is my take on the deck. Um. I really think I need to get this Jace, the Mind Sculptor, down and start finding some answers. I can always plus it. I'm kind of insulated versus Blood Braid because of the Teferi in play messes with it. I'm not going to play the land yet because if I draw a fetch, I'm likely to want to shuffle. It kind of sucks like just having it be able to die to a bolt. Or just the blood braid. Alright, well I think I can put this back. Alright, so I've got opt, so whatever I don't want to keep, I'm just going to put on the very top, I think. I think I'm okay ditching probably just both of these. I mean, I, I'm going to be keeping one anyway. Don't think I want a whole lot of them. It's a lot of this card, but I mean, it could all be good. I've got at least two targets on the way. I mean, I'm dead in, I think, four turns. Two plus three plus four is nine. I guess, no, I'm dead in like six turns, but that assumes you have actual no other pressure. Yep. All of the walkers dead. Yeah.
I'm gonna have to uh, go into uh, dire territory trying to uh, deal with this Chandra, unfortunately. Uh, the minus three is the flame sleep. Uh, she has uh, an X that uh, you probably know what her X does, but then she has yeah, an like X ray for non elementals. Yeah. Does it, if it kills it, it exiles it. Does it? Yes, it does. does. And it's a planeswalker recruit. I'm feeling kind of hopeless, but I mean, I'll, I'll fight it out and see what happens. I think I'm supposed to pass here. I have to just hold up what I've got. <laughs> For whatever reason, your uh, Chandra is, is dark, like I'm targeting it with something. <laughs> yeah, I get another one. Yup, yup. Feels Batman. Oof. Alright, well, unfortunately, I feel like I kind of have to counter it. You can't really flash blockers in with it either because you don't have the double red at the moment. It sucks really, really bad, but I think I have to counter this. I guess one way I could somehow come back into this game is getting an Uro down, but even then I don't have double green yet. And this, this really sucks, but I need to somehow pressure this. The Chandra target nothing. Take three. Yikes. All right. The issue is like even after I kill the Chandra, if I can, I still just have all these emblems in play. Very true. Is very strong. Jeez, just another one. All right. Well, I don't think I can let that happen either. I mean, this is a zero-sum game. Like, I'm just, I'm just very slowly losing is what's happening. I guess I shouldn't. Alright, I'll, I'll just scoop to it. I guess I should see what's in your deck, right. see what you cascade into. Yeah, sure. Oh, look at this great... Arbor Elf. How, Arbor do, I, how Elf. do I beat that Arbor Elf? Alright. Oh, dude. In terms of sideboard cards, I don't actually have much that comes in in this matchup. It's usually just amount. like a route. For... I do want to point out, too, that like... Playing Earl in this deck, like, one of the better sideboard cards out of blue-white is usually a rest in peace, and, like, you kind of just can't if you have Uro, unless you plan on taking Uro out. Usually versus traditional blue-white, I would take out Blood Moon, just because, like, it doesn't do as much as you would think it would, like, versus just traditional blue-white, because they play so many basics, but from what I saw, I guess Blood Moon is still pretty powerful here. Um, I mean, the normal cards are just good here, so, like, I trim those. I've got some good tools. I think I'm gonna, I, I don't think I want to go up on Wrath Effects, but I do want to play this one because it's less restrictive on colors. I just, I bring in the normal stuff. Uh, I still play... Some no, I I still play like two chokes, a boil, and some relics. Like that's kind of what I bring in here. Just yeah, boil boil's gonna be a rough one. I think I'm gonna cut the super mana intensive stuff 
just because of blood move considerations. I don't want to be completely dead in the water to it. But cutting powerful cards does make me feel a little worried. Yeah. Um, an Astrolabe was prevalent. Uh, when I played this deck, when I wasn't playing the Luka version, I was playing two boils, three sh uh, three chokes. I I think the I think the control matchup used to be pretty bad. Um, I even used to play like a second Awakened Inferno on the sideboard, just because like the matchup was so hor like horrible. Like they get ahead any like any bit, and, and you can't resolve anything, or they're just gonna infinitely tap your team down. So. My hand's acceptable. Mm. Hey, the greedy side of me wants to keep it, but I know better, so I'm gonna mulligan. Much better. I may just end up pitching this to the uh, the Force of Negation if that's something I'm interested in doing, which it looks like I, I am just interested in doing it. I need to slow you down as much as possible. Oh. I think I want to keep these two Boost cards roll. for sure. Boost uh, Roll's definitely the best starter for me. Yeah. Like, if it's Arbor Elf, I'm kind of just like, well, okay. Consideration there because Arbor Elf was in my hand to just keep that, but yeah. I mean, I feel like Arbor Elf, if you know you're playing against Blue White, is probably the better turn one play because I don't really have a good way of getting rid of it on one except for, I guess, Aether Gust post sideboard, but even that's not impressive. There's the ooze. All right, well, that I don't think I can let stick given that my hand contains Arrow. I do want to uh, not get blood moons. <laughs> oh, is this the fairy on top? Oh no, you're a uh, okay. That's a whole lot of magic card right there. Not not the best land. No land. Unlucky. Too. You did what? What was the turn for it too? Yeah. Uh, so like if I zero, um, it could get bolted. But I think I really want to find either fetch land, basic, or um, really any other land. I'm I am worried this gets bolted though. I think finding another basic is so important, though. It, it's close. What, what do you think? Do you think it's more important to like dig for a basic, assuming I don't have one, or plus here just so it's um, out of bolt range? Not considering what's in what's my hand, I personally think if you uptick, there's no way you lose the game. Well, I mean, I That's could just, lose to a blood moon. Like, could, you could lose to blood moon, but then the fall turn you can always just search for it again because you play i don't know how many basics you play not many um, the thing is like i mean the it, you, you have to too. whereas like if I, you get blood moon they know that uh, you you just have to if you're that worried about it i would spin but if you think that you're in control i think you uptick and then just continue to brainstorm every turn yeah, I'll, I'll go up with it, because, like, even even if you don't have a land, like, you still have to draw one, and I get to deny you one if I can. Do I want to put that on the bottom? No. 
All right, so now I get kind of rewarded, because assuming you don't have, you're assuming you're not like sandbagging your land for some reason, this is good. I would. Oh, I mean. Alright, let's see Thank if we you. can hit a basic of some kind. What is Fetch it? does it too. That's a basic of some kind. I think I want to bottom this card. And then I think I do want to just do it now. I could draw step it, but that seems okay. Matters, matters quite a bit because I can't make double red with Arbor Elf. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I upkeep it or draw step it, you can't do it to cast the creature anyway. But um, I'm saying just generally, it, it, it does actually matter there. So, yeah. So it, it's worked out um, this way. Because now I've got this. To interact with this card. Well, um, what do I do? What do I do? Brainstormed. <laughs> Every turn. What a four mana not playing Euro. Well, I don't have the cards in the yard yet. I need one more. Oh, you you are one off. I am corrected. I guess Bloodbraid would be along, along among the more annoying plays here. Yikes! Into a pyromancer. Um, I mean, I play Verdicts. It, it, I think I should just be letting this happen because I really want to have cards in the yard to make uh, this Uro good. And I think I've got a pretty good play lined up of this and then this targeting it. I have an option now. And then I can also throw this in front to maintain the number of cards in the yard. I have the bolt, by the way. Turn that you played, Chase. You did? Because you know now. Yeah. You did. Alright, so let's, let's opt and then probably just snap opt. Alright, there's, there's that. Um... Still think I want to keep the Jace nice and high. Oops, colors are important. So I do think I want to pop off one of these first, but I suppose I can brainstorm and figure that out. Not not the worst. I think I've just been putting back these two. Although I guess if I want a shuffle, I should probably put back this and this, and then feel the ruin. Let's feel the ruin now. And I can't really play the Uro first, because then it, it also just gets gets wrath. And then I don't think I think I think this one is better first because of this clause right here. 
could come up if he's got like grunt or something, I don't know. Alright, so as the plan sits right now, Uro is getting cast next turn. I just have to hope that this isn't the window where you draw some kind of grave hate. Don't untap. Well, that's rude. Yep. Luckily, Colonnade isn't an island. Luckily. <laughs> like, I can actually still get. Actually, no, I can't. I'll say I can cast Uro now, but I've got planes. Mm. So let's just keep brainstorming for the. I just have to hope this is good enough here. Well, I I, I found some powerful ones. <laughs> Certainly powerful. I think I'm bottoming that crazy as it may seem, and I think I'm also just bottoming one of these two. Popping. <laughs> I mean, I can use this card and then use this one on the way back down. Hmm. Maybe this card is just too far away, and then I can put this on top because I'll get access to it on the following turn. Please think... sounds like you drew the land. I did not oh, no. did not draw a land, but I drew a bunch of other fun options. or something. Hmm. I really, really, really want to cast this end step, which would involve me letting this happen. Like, I can cast this card and target this card, but it has me down another... It's probably just worth it. Cause I, can, I can do this play next turn and still hold up the path. So yeah, I'm kind of foregoing a uh, another mana source next turn, but having this colonnade is, has been my saving grace. Like having this Jason play just seems like big game. And then I could plus it again to uh, keep it out of another bolt range, which I probably should do. I know my top card already, and I've got plays lined up even if I don't hit a land, so I think I want to just preserve it when I can. Hmm. I'm, I think I'm okay with that. If you didn't do something cool on 4, you're probably not doing anything impressive on 5. And I've got answers even if you do. Put it on the bottom now. And then I think I should keep the Snapcaster back in case of another Bloodbraid. Rather not have to use this on a Bloodbraid. Two damage is less likely to matter, I think. Thank you for that end. I mean, my top card is going to be good, assuming I've got the mana to cast it. Moon. I'm just going to try to jam it here. As far as my top card is concerned, really wish I had that. Oh, this is kind of cute. Um, so, like, the, all my... Uh, like fetches, like my shocks will untap now because they're no longer islands, but my basics are still islands. Hmm. I mean, I've got triple blue, so I think 
it's still more important to get rid of the other card. I, I, I think this is still more important. Did you, did you top or bottom it? I don't have the window open. Topped it. Topped it. Topped it. I did. Fun thing I don't want to make can... you fate seal me again. Yeah. I was going to say, fun fun thing is, like, is I can actually just fate seal you here. No, I don't really want to give you... I have to make you choose, like, do you want to seal or brainstorm? Like... Yeah. I, I mean, mean, if you just answer, you can... My you top can just card brainstorm. is so good. I think I am just going to fate seal... If I can save my counter magic for something else, I'd be appreciated. Do I want to put it on the bottom? Yes. All right, and then I still think I want to protect versus a blood breed, so I won't attack. I mean, eventually losing out on all these two point attacks, is, it might come around to the point where like I could have won a damage race, but I don't think that's a big concern yet. Nothing, huh? All right, well now I think I do want to cast this card to unlock this card. So let's just get this out of here. For at least a turn. Not a terrible draw. Let's get Mystic Sanctuary, I think. Although I do know about the uh, Blood Moon, so I probably want to just get the island since I don't have something to pitch to the forces yet. So I think I'm going to use this window to slam a jam this Planeswalker. Let me keep up. Let me let me keep up the basic planes. <laughs> scoop to that, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, just I was need gonna a scoop to the Euro, but. Oh, yeah. yeah just yeah. cast the Euro there. I feel like that kind of highlights the, the blue white dilemma, at least as far as Euro goes. Like, when, when blue white is ahead and doing its thing, it has so much powerful stuff to do. I'm not sure that Euro like needs to be added, especially when you're adding another color. And uh, it's just like another threat susceptible to grave heat. Like what I replaced it with um, in the deck is a uh, big to fairy, and like big to fairy doesn't get grave hated. It can get attacked though, oh. so that's a thing. Uh, the turn, the turn that you tapped out, uh, when I was stuck on two lands, I had to choke. So if I drew the third land, I could have choked there, which would have been really impressive, because mm -hmm. you didn't have the colonnade at the time. Yeah, colony is important. Yeah. Yep. I just missed the window to uh, kind of turn. I think I could have maybe turned the corner if I had slammed the choke there if you didn't have the force. Yeah, my hand was awkward in the beginning and that it was so good, but just died to just like any amount of hate. This fan needs some help, but I don't think I can shift. In the back of these two. Yeah. Yikes. 
Yikes. Jeez, man. All right, well, this game is kind of over already. Maybe Force of Negation just yeah. is such a big deal that I need to mulligan to it. I mean, I'll take a draw step and then I guess I'll concede. I mean, I don't even have a third land. Like, if this is a non-land card, like, there's just not really a point in continuing. Yeah, okay, I drew an Uro. Huh. Alright, so yeah, I, I, I'm I not beating that draw. Like, my hand I, here, uh... I'll show you my hand. There you go, there's my hand. Boil, uh, Tarbell. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. I'm not beating that hand. Hey, I, yeah, I was... I was just gonna boil this turn and then I, I recreated the match. All right, well, that was that kind of goes to show how fast red green can be. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bant or I guess like really blue white doesn't really have a good way of dealing with that turn one elf. Oh. In the dark, this is definitely a keep. Um. It makes me nervous that I know what I'm playing against. Definitely a mole. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna mull my hand. My hand is, is very bad. This hand is also very poor. Not a little bit better. So you're telling me there's a chance. It's just a little bit better. Like, not much better. Can't really play this particular land anytime soon because of this mana restriction. A pretty good draw. Yeah. Hmm. Not ideal. And I do think I have to go ahead and draw step this path to exile. It's going to produce... You're, you're going to get mana on it on future turns, but I think slowing you down just a little bit is worth enough. My turn two is... My turn two is very important. Yeah, especially if you've got the accelerant. Alright. You got me there. You got me there, Marty. Alright, well that was that was an okay draw. I am nervous about the Blood Moon. Um, so I kind of have to choose which basic I want to get and be worried about. I mean, I guess if I play this, that if I play this, I can just hold up some countering. So yeah, this 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 was a good draw. I mean, Blood Braid would be annoying, but I mean... Yeah, like, you were you were gonna have four mana on turn three anyway with the L. Hmm. Just casting a 4-3, huh? Damn. It's a lot of pressure. Hey. It's a lot of pressure. I've been very, very impressed with Bone Crusher Giant since his release. I, I started at one copy of this card... And slowly it went to two, and now I'm like, do I play three copies of this card? Because it's just that good. So th this is an attack for three right now, and then a seven on every additional turn. Which means I'm dead in three turns if you've got a bolt or I do three damage to myself. I think that's too much. I think I have to counter the uh, Bone Crusher. Elf comes in pretty clutch with these type of matchups where like one for oneing is kind of. I think I'm actually big. meant to uh, counter the Blood Braid. I was assuming I can deal with the Bone Crusher by means of a sweeper beforehand, which would be the way that I do it. It actually saves me more life, assuming I can kill this within three turns. Which is ideally the plan. Um, Alright, well, doing this and bouncing it doesn't seem very good because you could just use the stomp mode to finish it off. 
I think I'm just going to play the Field of Ruin, so if a Blood Moon happens, um, I can uh, get my planes, or otherwise just like get a second White Source anyway. If something really dumb happens, I'll probably use this counter spell. But if nothing dumb happens, I'll probably just activate Field of Ruin, get my basic. Colossus. Can you beat this card? It's gonna be one of the harder ones. Don't... Dude, this card matters a lot. Yeah, I think I need to get, get rid of this thing. Like, had you cast something like Seasoned Pyromancer, I think I let that happen because I'm, like, no matter what, I'm still playing to some kind of sweeper. Yeah. Aquathus definitely makes this very hard because it, I, it attacks the graveyard and it just kind of pressures you. So I think that the plan here is if you play another creature, I'll probably play this card. And if you don't, I'll play this and then try to untap into the Planeswalker. And it's a little on the awkward side because if you don't have a creature and then I pass this thing, I'm taking a total of 6 and going to 9, which is some extra damage maybe I don't want to be taking. I mean, you cloth this last turn. You didn't play a creature last turn, so... I mean, it doesn't really imply that you don't have another one. It is a risk, but I think I... it's worth it to just try to multi for one as many times as possible. Oof, Blood Moon is is kind of a punish. So now I can't even pass this card unless I want to. Uh, path now anyway, which I probably should. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah, Blood, Blood Moon is a good one here. Yeah, this, this sequencing was really good for you. Blood Moon is like such the perfect play, because even if I counter it, you still just have a 4-3 in play, and then I'm untapping, and I'm in the same position as last turn, except now my mana's worse. So, like, now You're I need strong. to somehow find my planes. Like, even among all of that, like, I still need to worry about this thing just getting bolted down. I think, I think since I'm so far behind, I need to take the high-risk line and just dig for that planes as quickly as possible. Yeah. Planes to have a chance? To do it. I, I have to do it now before you draw, like, something else. I guess it doesn't matter because it's your turn, so force doesn't come up, but I'd rather just yeah. bolt it now. I'm, I'm going to scoop because I, right, I'm cool. kind of brainstorm locked. Like, I've got some counters that I can cast, but that's just treading water. Your, your sideboard cards are just a lot better yeah. than my sideboard uh, I, cards. I was untapping and playing Waken in front. Yeah. That's what I was doing. I was untapping and playing Awaken in front of us, so... Yeah, I mean, even if you play something big and I try to counter, and then you play something big and then I try to counter, like, even then I'm drawing to exactly planes. Like, I can't cast Cryptic, so if I draw them, because oh. I have two islands. And, like, all my other good cards involve having lots of colors. Yep. I think, um, have you seen the new blue whitelist that plays, like, Frantic Inventory? I have. That seems cool. Yeah, I, I like that list a lot. Um, I've never been, like, the biggest blue-white fan, but, I mean, the Frantic Inventory is... Um, what's the what's the old card that's like played in Popper? That's uh, kind of the same. Oh, um, uh, accumulated knowledge. Accumulated knowledge. It's pretty much accumulated knowledge. Yeah, except this one doesn't count the copies in all the graveyards. Like if your opponent has them, it doesn't draw for both libraries for both. Yeah. 
Your uh, mic is lagging a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it. I think that's on the sideboard is not great versus this view. Uh, uh, Anger, Bayloth, Sphinx, Trinosphere. I see people play Cinder Vines. I tried Cinder Vines for a while. I'm not super fond of the card, so. This hand has lands and spells that I can cast. But yeah, so so far the Uros have not felt super necessary. I think they've harmed the deck more than helped. I mean, this is speaking from the experience of playing against an actual Blood Moon deck. But even then, like if you play against something like Mono Red, the mana base is a little extra painful for no reason. I mean, Uro is good against the aggro decks, but if you've got if you've got the lands and not the Uros, like there there are three three shock lands that make make green and then there are three Uros. Like the odds you have a bad card against an aggro deck are equal to having a good card. Sure. Interesting indeed. Two sprawls naming red, huh? <laughs> Where shall I do? See, like, I wish this was just another basic. Very possible I should have just played this card. Just like prevent blood braids from being great. But I think I really want to get a basic while I can. I mean Teferi would just like bounce a blood moon if, if that's the play. But I, I would really like to cast this on turn four, targeting uh targeting this card here as a multi for one. I mean, at a minimum, you've got a Bone Crusher to play. That card's insane. Alright, well, I don't have a great way of dealing with it right now. Alright, I'm pretty sure I should just get the planes. off how many do you play like three maybe two play what i feel ruins uh, i i, I, I don't three. know how much the loot. three yeah, i don't know how much the regular blue light deck play all right i'm pretty sure i'm supposed to just cast this right now targeting this this time raveler Just it just it cuts you off of too much. I mean, you still have access to as much as four mana this turn, which is unfortunate. But I mean, I feel like it's the highest risk, highest reward play. It's like even if I play to fairy, you just have so many cards and so much mana advantage. Like, I can't be losing on cards uh, and mana. Just had the choke. Damn it. Maybe I should have just waited and just, like, counterbounced. Yeah, that seems way better. Yeah, I've got a planes now. Enjoy. Yeah, that, that was pretty bad by me. I was afraid of what you would do with all of the mana, but maybe maybe I just have to wait and see what happens with the cryptic. Yeah, that was.
was a really atrocious play looking back at it. Yep. Uh, go. Yeah, your, your sideboard cards are just so powerful. Be powerful. I need to find like an Aether Gust, and even that only deals with it for a turn. Yeah, I mean, I'm just dead to the Clothus and Choke. Alright, uh, for purposes of saving time, I'll just go ahead and concede here. My hand, my hand was fine. Right. I ha I just drew the purge for the Clothus, but like that taps down my sanctuary and means that choke is, is murdering me even harder. Yeah, right, I so. had a, I had stomp and bolt, so. So uh, I guess like as is our our uh, our general organization, this will be our third and final best of three, and then I guess we'll do a wrap up from there. For sure. Ooh, on the die roll. Let's go. <clears throat> what does this hand do? In the dark, this hand's great, and against pawns, this hand's fine. Little silly. Uh, you know? Okay. Auto, auto resolves. Very nice. the good old fashioned turn to jam blood moon sprawl <laughs> still could be a turn to jam blood moon clothus yeah that's a creature on the stack Two Clothus was good at regionals uh, earlier in the year. I very underestimated this card. Very much so. Yeah, card strong. For sure. <laughs> Not the worst draw. I've got this to be insulated from from the Blood Moon. I feel like you probably would have played it on turn two if you had it on turn two. Especially after having a double Utopia Sprawl draw. Chandra, jeez. Yep. Your whole deck is Haymakers. Mm-hmm. And Cloths is online, jeez. Yeah, I don't see how I ever beat this deck. Like, red-green is just kind of the control deck's nightmare. Like, you don't have any one particular avenue you're trying to fight on. So, like, I can't just, like, counter all of your combo pieces or just, like, attack your hand or counter oh. what's important. Like, just every single card you have is individually important. Like, I, I have nothing good to do here. Like, my hand is Snapcaster, Archmage's Charm. I'm like cantrip. Like I cannot win here. Like I have to uh, play to a verdict, and then even then die to a Chandra. Dead. Like I, I have actual no series of draws that gets me out of this game. If you just draw all lands for the rest of the game.
I'm going to try something slightly different just because it hasn't worked out for me the last two times and then you know maybe maybe this ends up being good who knows I'm not going to play this this card instead so I'm going to play these, this instead I still think I want to do the same uh, sweeper package uh, a slight variation <sighs> I've to have I also fully believe you. you did what? I, really, I also fully believe that being on the play with this deck is so much more important than being on the draw as, as, as red green Yeah. Um, being on the play just allows me to do very, very powerful things like if I'm on the draw versus you and you have like mana leak on turn two, like my, my blood boon gets way worse than it would have on the play. So like the the tempo like the tempo side of this deck where you wanna like power out like three drops on turn two. It it matters whether you're on the play or draw and I've always I've always been a firm believer that being on the play impacts this deck way more. Like this hand is pretty unplayable, not gonna lie. I'm gonna mold a five. This hand is very excellent, and I feel angry for bottoming these two. Alright. My, my hand needs some help, but it's otherwise good. I've got my we'll colors. Fly, so. I've got my insulation versus Blood Moon. I don't have my insulation versus Boil and Choke, but... It is what it is. Open a prayer here. Oh, like well, we we got there. We did a land. I mean, yeah. I mean, this game is gonna go long enough to the point where, like, if you really need lands, you'll get them eventually. Which hate piece is this? It's not a hate piece. The issue is it makes this card really bad. I th I think I'm supposed to just counter this so that way my my three fairy is like actually actually good. I think I'm gonna save this card for a more permanent um, something I need to answer more permanently. And like I know, I know that this is actually a choice for you because uh, because of how few cards you have. Like, there's no guarantee you have another land. I mean, I know you don't because you said you didn't. But like, even then, like being so few on cards, maybe this pyromancer is important. Uh, the contents of my hand are not like great. So, like, I feel like I need Pyromancer to try to sculpt my hand a little bit better. So I'll, I'll keep it on top, but, you know. Just because the two, like, two of the cards on my hand, just, I'd rather not have. Alright, and then this is the part where I would pray you don't have another land. Alright. Which basic is more important? I probably want to just get the planes as a blood moon consideration and also a choke and boil consideration. In here. Ooh, bounces. Alright. Can't let you have this card. I do have to battle over to Fairy here. I think it's, I'm supposed to let it go. Feels bad to let it go. Yeah, I, I honestly just cannot let Fairy stick around. Uh. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, Field of Ruin. Oh man, this lines up so well for you. I think it's hilarious how I can oh. do so much good fighting and then if you just boil me at the right time, I die anyway. Like, I have cryptic command here. So do I just slam the pyromancer and hope that's good enough? Or do I slow down a little bit? I think I'm gonna go slow down for a turn, see what you do. Like, I don't feel that inclined to push. So, like, with, this, are... with this attack, like, I, I there's consideration to uh, casting this. But I think this is gonna be really important to pair with the other card in my hand, so it's probably just too greedy and I should take one. Like, I could just slow you down even more, but I have no conceivable clock, so, you, like, we're gonna get to the point of the game where you get your lanes back anyway. I feel the need to try to force the Pyromancer there, like... I'd rather try to, like, overload you on one turn. I think than... I'm putting this gust back on tap. Good. Jeez. So that actually means a lot of mana. That puts you up to six mana as early as this turn. Oh, damn. Like, if I leak it, you at least tap out. But, like, you still get to keep this brawl. It feels so bad. I did not want to have to force this, but I kind of feel like it's forcible. Well... Get in there, buddies. Coast to coast. They're going. I told you how I've cast two Arbor Elves and beat a, a blue, uh, not blue white, but a Bant control player before. Oh, so you mean like the deck I'm playing? <laughs> I, I just happened before because they didn't want to trade their quotals or like anything. Then I just kept attacking for two, putting stuff on the stack that they had to counter. Alright, so I know you have Gus now. Right. Oh man, you're gonna time walk me if I do this, but that's... Yep. If you let this resolve... No. 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 Oh. Take one. For later. Secret tool that I can make. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not exactly my dream draw, but maybe it'll be good at some point. Draw. Passes the turn, has a three. An attack for one, that's a little suspicious. Hello. <sighs> 
what card do I want to throw under the bus right now? I think it's your time to go, buddy. I think the Huntmaster or something. Alright, me. I think this answer is better. Gotta hold this guy back to stop the barrage. <laughs> oh, whatever shall I do? Two, man two damage a turn. Now what's just one? If you wanna throw an elf into my snappy. You gonna bolt this? Don't you <laughs> don't you dare. Oh my god. Why why does this feel so important? <laughs> I think I'm gonna counter it just because of the rest of my hand, the rest of the contents of my hand. Oh man. <laughs> Come on, attack me. Offer the trade. Deal. <laughs> Only us can make it a world about two armor elves for lethal. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, All I right, can't so do nothing for her. Alright, that was a draw. I can't. Dude, that's. Right, let's make sure this thing doesn't get bolted. Put it on the bottom? No. It's a land. Yeah, it's a land. It's a fetch. And I fetch, even though it was like a busted card. <laughs> hmm. I'm like, All right. I'm like finally turning the corner. Don't ruin this for me. <laughs> Nothing. Not even an attack. What? Thing here. Sorry. Oh, that, that's a good draw. Let's play that. Put this back on top. Say yes. Then let's brainstorm. Turning the corner! I'm doing it! <laughs> uh. I'm just gonna put this thing back. I just, I'm not even close to casting it. Well, my, uh. my hand's pretty... Pretty good. Getting to the point where uh, I don't think I can win. My, my hand is kind of stacked, but I still can't beat a stupid Chandra, the big one. I could gust it for like a turn. And then like if I have a snap, I guess I can do it for a turn again. I mean, all, all the while I'm uh... I guess I have Jace going. Play your stupid tokens. Yep. Uh huh. Wow, that's that's kind of rude. You know that. Two? Oh, snap, you get to brainstorm three turns in a row? What you got for me? Nothing? Nothing? At all. Nothing at all. This three damage is enough. Alright, so I know my top card. Don't really want it. But I think I want to be able to shuffle after this. So I think I should just brainstorm first. Like, I can plus again. 
Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So one of the cards I'm trying just showed up. If you know you have, you're going to have seven cards in your hand, I'm going to have two. Oh, this game is looking a little over. What is this? Monster you've been for. It's a science experiment. That's yeah. what it is. Like, I figure you just have, like, so many bolts. Your stomps aren't super effective against it. Um, assuming I can prowess trigger at least once. But, I mean, your bolts are pretty effective. Oh, hey, I won. Yeah, my hand was nuts. I have here. Let me yeah. show you. What was it? I, I already pressed it's, the it's, inside one. Path, Snap, Gust, and two Cryptics. Oh. I don't think I was playing that. My hand was uh, choke and boil, so. Dude, I just want to take Euro out of this deck so bad. Like, I like the idea, <clears throat> but uh, it just, like, has not shined. I mean, I haven't, like, in the beginning of the game, I didn't fetch, like, the green sources. But my my hand was all yeah. blue and white spells. It's like, the rest of the deck is blue and white. Yeah. The game was really rough for me. I mulled the five and really stuck for a while. So... I mean, I'll keep the Uro in for like sake of testing, but I haven't I haven't escaped it once. I mean, granted though that no. your deck is probably one of the better decks at preventing it. Like you can deny the graveyard and you can deny um my mana. Um, I keep this under the circumstance that this card is nuts. I just have to ship this. Like, this hand is so good, but I'm playing against Ponza, it's, it's so bad. Well, this hand yeah. is, uh, this hand is, a, uh, I guess, better. And anything. And, like, it, it, it feels bad, but I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to just... Slow you down again by a turn. Please. <laughs> so yeah, I think my conclusion on Uro is at least within the context of playing against a mana denial deck, I don't like it at all. things to do interesting choke that yep yikers So I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be Teferiing. This Arbor Elf represents an extra mana anyway because of the Sprawl, so I think a path is actually a net positive here, but it still doesn't feel good. I mean, your next turn might be Bloodbraid, so I feel like getting the Teferi down now is probably best. And I can make you waste mana on Clothus again. Yeah, I mean, like, another reason to path there was because, uh, like, if you still had your stupid elf, you could just attack the Teferi down. Yep. There it is. Stomp. Choke. <laughs> I 
when you played Colony of Planes, it was like crap. Dude, I've drawn answers to your... I've drawn, like, the correct counterspell to your hate, like, every single time immediately after you cast it. Feels, <laughs> feels kind of What, bad. like, Gust or something? Something like that. Just feels so bad. Like, I think literally, like, I'm three for four on drawing the answer immediately after you cast it. Ooze. Yep. I mean, I'm not out of it yet. I have so many lands in play, by the way. I see. Oh, I gave you two of them. <laughs> Top or bottom? Bottom. Lotus Petal. Gosh, this feels so bad. Like, I, I, like, need to find third path to exile off of this op. This ooze is going to be ridiculous otherwise. I mean, I can play this card and, like, somehow hope that you can't kill it. That just seems like such a bad game, though. You know what? I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna sack my Lotus Petal. I mean, Teferi isn't even guaranteed dead right now. There needs to be another creature in the yard, but I mean, any removal does that. Puts, puts me in a bit of a spot. Oh my god. Alright, well, this is getting forced. Kind of unfortunate, because, like, the boil's kind of taking care of it already, too. But I really want to force this just so I can, like, make sure that I have triggers of this mentor. The fairy gets to live now. Cage, yep. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like one of the reasons blue eye control is so good, or at least one of the leg up legs up that it gets, is that it doesn't just fold to graveyard hate. And I think playing playing the Uro package just it just makes you die to that grave hate like you would never bring in cage against the white control player but it, here it is yeah i didn't bring it in usually but th this was the card that i said i was testing out like it was like i i, I just bring in relics because relic kind of does the same job of like snap you know snap and sanctuary yeah but cage like stops this non like nonsense like And I think I'm supposed to tick up the Teferi there because it's so big that it's in play. Like, next turn I can Teferi and, like, bounce the choke, but you could just replay it. The chance that you have a spell here, pretty high. What's the chance that you have a spell that you can cast? I mean, all the paths do paths. it, uh, all the ops do it, some sideboard cards Three do it. Three ops, two paths left in the deck. I mean, this is the kind of spot that I was hoping to put you in. Because, like, you don't really have a good attack unless I've got Stone Cold Nothing. Three cards in hand, though? Yeah. What's the, What's the chance that you have another path or another opt? You've seen one opt and you've you seen two paths. Two paths. Gust and Gust just blows out. I'll, I'll just. Perfect. 
purge. I mean, yeah, Mentor is looking good. Uh, flooding out here, so it's looking a little rough. It's almost more worth it to just bounce the use. Like, choke doesn't seem great. I mean, I, I kind of think I do, because, like, I want to be casting my spells and start getting in for damage. I can often help me make that decision. But I guess I'm just looking for, like, two mana spells that I can cast. now that doesn't exactly qualify okay all right so I do think I want to bounce this to get in some damage maybe I draw something good I mean yeah I, I didn't play with the mentor the first two matches because I assumed it died to too much I, I mean, have to draw. It, it, it's been Both the reason. Stomps. It's only six cards. Yeah, it's been the reason why I've won. Uh, why I why I'm ahead this game and why I won the last game. So may, maybe maybe my error the first two matches was just not playing mentor. My last three draw steps have been lands. Nice. Yeah, so. All right. So that, that is think, our third best of three. I think overall, um, I think Mentor is probably correct. Because I only played two Bone Crushers and four Bolts. That's six outs. Yeah, that's a lot. But like you, I think you just kind of have to slant the deck. At least that version, you have to slant it down. Where like, if you if you on top of this card, you're winning the game, right? Like yeah. So, um, I think something like that, the road block V two is also pretty, like good because you have force to back it up as well. So that's, you know. Yeah, and I I think what I learned is that at least when it comes to red green. Like you're kind of like as proactive as it can as you could possibly be, and like being reactive to red green just really isn't a viable plan. So maybe maybe I should just be boarding out counter spells more aggressively, and uh, just playing all my proactive threats like the mentor. Because I mean the mentor did look good. Um, like the way uh, I boarded uh, against you, huh? Uh, go ahead. Uh, I was saying like the way I boarded against you. I uh I took out a I took out the Archmage charms because I figured they weren't countering much and like just like uh, I really don't want to be paying triple blue against boils and and chokes and blood moons and then I shaved I shaved Uro um down to two because I figured you just have so much grave hate and again like you deny my mana so well too and the mana is real tough on it and then I also took out spell snare um because the counter is like pretty much nothing the counter is stomp and that's kind of it. And then I also shaved on a Snapcaster. And and that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I shaved the so, Snapcaster. So, I definitely think... I definitely think Red Green... Red Green is always proactive. Like, they they, they always want to use their mana, like, as efficiently as possible. They want to, like... Every turn, they want to be casting something, like, powerful, right? Like, like the first game... Or the second... No, the third game, the first uh, game of that... Where, like, I played, like, Torch of Defiance and Clothis. Like, every turn I was playing something, like, major, right? Yeah. That's basically what what the deck does. Um, yeah. I mean, the way that I sideboarded was I, I, I just thought Blood Moon. Usually, people keep in pillages and things like that. I'm under the impression that Blood Moon is just good enough, uh, usually against decks like this. Or any, any mid-rangey deck or control deck, I think Blood Moon is just powerful enough. You don't really need to tap out on two to pillage some somebody. Like, if you tap out a Blood Moon, then that's usually good enough into, like, a big threat. So, um, I've always just trimmed... I've always cut all four pillages in a matchup like this. Uh, I brought in, like, the Chokes and the Boil, and I brought in my Relics. Um, 
I think overall, I, I think blue white is definitely harder for me to beat than like the variation that you were playing. Um, Awaken Inferno is basically the card that I have to draw, or like Clothis. Like those are the two cards that win me those matchups. So overall, I think I think blue white is strong. Uh, I think red green is really strong. Um, I was pretty impressed with this deck overall. Yeah. I, um, I think it goes back to what I was saying before. I think around match two is like blue white and like counter spell decks tend to be pretty good when decks have a very specific game plan that you're trying to disrupt. Red green can attack from multiple, multiple angles. Like you attack the mana, you attack the graveyard, you attack the battlefield and you've got planeswalkers. There's just too much for, I think blue white yeah. to handle. Yeah, for sure. Um, with, with the printing of Aether Ghost, when did Aether come out? M19, right? Uh, I think it was 20. M20. Aether Ghost has definitely helped Blue Light this matchup better. Um, when I see people like have three, two to three, even four Aether Ghosts in their sideboard, it definitely is a nightmare to work through. Um, like Awakened Inferno is a good card, yes, but, uh, when, when they're like sanctuarying back gusts, it can be like pretty tough. Like, Definitely be one of those things where they gust me, cryptic me. Um, deck definitely has like uh, some things that it can be attacked on. Like uh, heavy removal spell decks, just kind of. Uh, I, t- I tend to believe that decks like Jund are pretty well against this deck as long as I don't slam Blood Moon. Like decks that can dis- disrupt my hand and disrupt like counter spells, like Death Shadow. Like I think I don't I don't think Death Shadow. I don't think it's a good matchup for Red Green just because of, like, Inquisition and Thought Seas being so powerful. So I, I think Red Greens were really well-positioned. I don't know if it gets more well-positioned with Goblins. I don't know. I've not played that matchup. But I've been looking forward to trying out Goblins, too, because I think that deck is very powerful. Yeah. We might have to try that out on a uh, future video. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I've had a lot of fun playing um, the Grixis Shadow versus Goblins uh, match up so maybe mm-hmm. we do that at some point yeah i i haven't played goblins i think your mic cut out i see you for a while oh you there yeah i'm here okay i haven't really like played goblins since i can see a few years ago uh i haven't played modern with it but um i don't i don't know if it's one of those decks where like heavy removal decks, it just overloads you because it attacks you on lots of axes, or it's just like, at least for red green, like I only have four bolts, two bone crushers. Like, is that enough to beat Snoop and friends, or are they just going to grind me out with ringleaders, you know? They'll like, just, yeah, they'll grind you out with the ringleader. Ringleader's strong. And like, your, your, your powerful uh, cards that you, you expect to get free wins with, like Blood Moon, just don't really have that much of an impact against Black Red. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they have. They have the lands to back it up. They're mostly red anyway, so like you're really only cutting them off of like a few cards, and then they have Vial to back it up. Yeah. And um, definitely think, definitely want to try out goblins. I I also think that goblins isn't even that. I think people uh, just think that uh, that deck is bad against control when ringleader is just a powerhouse. So. Um, I don't know. Overall, it's definitely worth trying out in future videos, but I think red green is strong. I think blue white frantic inventory like control. I, I'd like to see that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just because you don't, your man is not as attacked as like in this deck. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, as, as far as Uro is concerned and blue white control, um, I know I haven't had a whole lot of experience yet. Literally just this video, but it just doesn't seem worth it. Um, what I chose to replace it with again was uh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, the five mana card. Um, I, 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 I try to swap it for that because they fulfill kind of similar roles. They're, they're kind of that last stabilization piece that generates some amount of card advantage. And they cost similar mana, but the, the mana uh, overall just gets so much worse because you need double green to get at the stick in play. And you just open yourself up to being, to being hit by all the grape hate that you were otherwise not caring about. Like, Snapcaster, Snapcaster is already a card that requires use of your own graveyard, but people don't really bring in dedicated graveyard hate for just Snapcaster. 
But having Snapcaster and Uro, I think, really pushes it over the top. And then furthermore, like, you can't really use your own graveyard hate effectively anymore, because like I mentioned earlier in the video, Rest in Peace used to be one of the most powerful sideboard cards that exist, and it might it might become extra powerful again now that Ashlib is banned. Not entirely sure yet, but playing Uro, you, you just do not get access to it, and I think that might be a big loss. Oh, I still do believe with Mystic Sanctuary. Sanctuary and Snapcaster Mage. I feel. I still think as as the red green player, you still bring in relics just because like I, I do want to attack your graveyard a little bit because mm -hmm. I don't want to get like cryptic looped or anything like that. But I don't want to dedicate like four cards to just, like, attacking your graveyard. Whereas like in this deck, whereas like if I'm playing Cage and Relic, like I would never bring in Cage against regular blue white because like what am I gonna do? Like stop Snapcaster Mage? Yeah. Like, make it Ambush Viper. Yeah, it's still a two one. Uh, that. Yeah, and there's just situations like that where, like, uh, even Leyland of the Void in, in decks, like other decks, like, uh, like what plays Leyland of the Void? Uh, does Shadow play it, right? Uh, not so much anymore. It's mainly just uh, decks that are afraid, that use their own graveyard and afraid of the opponent. So, like, Dredge, for example, I think oh. they usually use Leyland. Yeah. So, like, a deck that plays Leyland of the Void, like, they would probably never bring that in against you. Whereas, like, if they see Euro, they would definitely be like, yeah, I'm bringing this card in, and it could actually matter, so. Yeah, so yeah, in, in conclusion, not not a big fan of Euro in the shell. Um, just, I don't yeah. think Blue-White needs it. I yeah, think like, Blue-White is powerful it, enough as is. Yeah, it just, it just does not help the deck in any matchups where it needs another grinding threat, because, I mean, that is what it is. Like, it replaced a grinding threat and is a grinding threat, and I don't think it does the job any better than you know it's a card a card that i like in blue white that um our other teammate cj when he played blue white he played it was timely reinforcements and i know that's usually a sideboard card but i, I i've, I've always liked it uh one maybe two and i've seen like two in the sideboard as well i think that card is kind of like it's the same mana as euro or euro is still like to escape it but like blue white can just like play timely and just Cat, like make so much time for them like um just give them what two three turns sometimes with that card yeah so um, i just think blue white i think blue white is probably the stronger pick you, you don't hit your mana as hard and you get uh you get rest in peace which i think is like you said i agree with you i think rest in peace is a very important sideboard card to have right now um so I mean, it's always important to have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just I mean, did not like it. I, I prefer traditional blue-white where you've got counters big, and where your, 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 your primary finisher is just big Planeswalkers. All right. And with counter spells and bounce, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, unless you have anything else you want to add, I think we're good to wrap up the video. Oh, man, I'm good. Uh, it was it's it's always fun to play these like best of threes, you know. Yeah, best of three, best of threes, um, yeah. yeah. Best of three, best of threes, three out of threes. Uh, it's just kind of see like. I think you might cut out again. Uh, 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 just kind of what you what you see and like maybe people play these decks and see like how we would sideboard and things like that. It's definitely interesting. Uh, it's kind of like a heads-up clash. Just see, you know. And and, and while well, while we, we test stuff um, within, like, the specific instance of, for example, we're, we're, playing, we're trying to play Uro against a land hate deck, but, like, while that's a pretty extreme test of, of, of splashing a card like Uro, I feel like the woes that I experienced can be applied to other matchups as well. Like, obviously it's going to be highlighted here, but I think it definitely Very applies true. to other places. Very true. Um, and I think in the future, um, we should probably... Um, I think it would be nice to post these deck lists out and uh, so other people could see them if they want to try the decks out, like what we think, you know, our interpretation of these decks are. Yeah, we, we so, can put all those on the Twitter. Which, if you aren't Pretty following true. already, it's uh, it's um, Team Spellbomb, no underscores, no nothing. Oh, Ed, go follow. Do it. Do it. All right. Uh, see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, have a good one.